So, so, so uh, yes. yes. lawyer. So I just want to uh, correct some impression mm -hmm. that I've created. I have to leave, the impression that the only you know uh, mm -hmm. group of people yes. who can interpret the constitution uh, is the Supreme Court. That is not correct. You see. In a, in a, a very important case, Nick would be Tete Chu versus the Attorney General. This issue came, and Justice Duce was emphatic that it is only the other courts that can interpret the Constitution. But any other person working with the Constitution, including the Speaker, uh, committees, they can interpret the Constitution. But when it comes to a court, and this is what he said, let me just, let me just yeah, uh, uh, read. He yeah, said, it is therefore to be noted that only courts properly so-called and duly established under the Constitution 1992 or an Act of Parliament, can qualify to make referral to the Supreme Court. Since the referral in this case was made by a duly recognized court, that is the High Court. So in the case, somebody objected that there was a committee which sought to interpret the Constitution, and therefore the committee didn't have the power to interpret the Constitution. And Doche was saying that, no, that referral clause, which is found in Article 30, is in reference to courts properly so-called courts that have been established as having uh, jurisdiction. So it is not the case that any time some people are working with the constitution and there's a question, they have to refer to the Supreme Court before they continue. It is only courts that are that. And secondly, he, he referred to Article 99, which says that if the question arises as to whether there's a vacancy in parliament, that question should be, I mean, sent to the high court. It doesn't mean that any time there is vacancy, you have to go to the high court for the high court to declare the vacancy. It says when the question arises, if you read the provision, it didn't say that when you want to declare, you go to the high court. Where the constitution wants you to go to the high court for a declaration, it tells you specifically. So, for example, Article 33, mm -hmm. it tells you that if you want to enforce human rights, go to the Supreme Court. But in this particular 19, it says when there is a question, and when there is a question means that when there is a dispute out of people's opinion, mm -hmm. and that, so for example, the speaker says that it's vacant, and you believe that it's not vacant, the place to go is the high court. It doesn't mean that whenever you, you want to declare, the speaker cannot declare, and that you have to wait and go to the high court for the high court to make that declaration. So I believe that some of these things must be correct, and there are, and there are decided cases okay. in support of these provisions. So I, I still get surprised that we repeatedly say this thing, that the speaker should have referred the matter to the Supreme Court, the speaker should have referred the matter to the High Court. When there are clear decided cases on this matter saying that it is not anybody who can refer, it's only courts. If the matter is in the court, court, then the court can refer to the Supreme Court for interpretation. But it doesn't mean that if I am working as a public official in, a, in an organization and a constitutional provision, and I'm trying to put my understanding, then you say, no, I have to stay what I'm doing. Can, they even, can the court function? If all of us would have to refer every question that we think is, 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 is in the Constitution to the Supreme Court, can it function? You know, so I think we should stop this particular argument because all week I've heard it from a lot of people, senior lawyers, when there's a decided case, it's on the, the decided case on the matter. Thank you very much. Well, uh, now, uh, Dr. Ashid Doman, you would, would have to leave us in a bit. So I want to have you specifically come in. With, with how the matters have proceeded now, there was a talk about negotiation as well. Do you see that happening? Yeah, Alfred, I think that uh, I have said this right from the beginning on your platform, uh, even before Tuesday. I said that if I were to advise uh, our leaders, uh, the President, the Chief Justice, and the Speaker would have to sit together with the leaders of Parliament before Tuesday. Um, and we saw what happened. Uh, I just, before, before I leave, Alfred, I want to say a few things. Uh, just building on um, what Senor was saying about mm -hmm. the issue of trust. You know, we have been working, uh, you know, to strengthen our parliamentary democracy. And I've been at this for um, many, many years. Today, Democracy is facing severe headwinds. And, you know, at the heart of it is the conduct of our parliamentarians. And now I'm talking to both sides of the House. Um, you look at study after study, data after data, the Afrobarometer, Pew Research, International Idea. You know, Everybody says we don't trust the people who lead us. And the Right Honorable Speaker made this uh, comment when he delivered the alumni lectures just recently. You know. And so if we are in this kind of situation 
and particularly in our case, in our sub-region, I think we are the only last hope. You look at our northern neighbors, you know, they are on fire. And just yesterday we heard how, uh, whether true or not, I mean, the terrorists are infiltrating and they got to where they got to because of the kind of significant lack of trust in the system within which they operate. So I would say this, Alfred, just like what uh, Honorable Jinapo said, um, legal issues will not resolve, re legal approaches will not resolve what we are dealing with. It's a political problem. And in advanced democracies, we see what happens in the U.S. Biden will call the leaders of Congress and say, let's make a deal. Let's sit down and talk until we find a solution. When the country is almost on a brink, I mean, most of the time is um, economically. During Ob Obama's time, the same thing. So I think the le our leaders have to make a deal. We understand government business will suffer. But like Honorable Jinapo said, at the end of the day, it's only talk that's going to take us out of this. Mm -hmm. um, Parliament, in the scheme of things, I mean, our democracy stands on three legs. The wobbly one, the wobbly leg is Parliament. The weakest one is Parliament. And by the actions of our MPs and all the people that work with them and so on from outside, they are forgetting that they are weakening the institution yes. the more. Because if one has the right to go to the court, another person has the right to go to the court. And now that's what we are seeing. We are not careful. Parliament will be immobilized. And that's not what we want. Parliament will be immobilized. Immobilized. Parliament will not be able to do anything at all. Because, I mean, you start and somebody will run to the court and say, stop it. Another person starts... And like I've been saying to you and uh, to your colleagues, minorities change. So tomorrow we might wake up and it's, it's a different minority. And let's keep that this in mind. There's a senator in the U.S. in his last statement before he exited Congress. He titled his speech, Minorities Change. And he says that when you are in majority, make sure that while you are pushing down, you can live with it when you find yourself in the minority. And I think that this goes to the two parties. We are here because, you know, our parties have been thrown into a zone of discomfort. They are always used to NDC having majority and no issue. MPP having majority, no issue. And now Ghanaians have said, go and sit down and compromise and discuss and dialogue. But I think it has been very difficult. What's your verdict on this 8th parliament, really? My verdict? I want more of the 8th parliament. One more of this kind yes. of parliament. Yes. There are some who say that. No, no, Alfred. Chaotic. Hold on. Hold on. Fact, hold on. I want more of the eighth parliament. Even because the, says the Petit Speaker says it's no, disappointing. No, it's really? not about the quality. It's not about the number of. Yeah, talking about the quality. Yes, it's not about the number of laws or the number of bills that are passed. I think we are more concerned about the quality of the bills and then we are also more concerned about the quality of oversight. Look, Alfred. I've been following this parliament. I've seen, I mean, right honorable speaker when he was minority leader, when he was majority leader. I've seen um, my friend honorable chairman, majority leader, minority leader. I've worked with all of them over the years. I've never known that our parliament has the power of the press until this eighth parliament, where negotiations have to take place. For instance, for some financial bills, you know, to not to pass the way they were okay so we want more of the eighth parliament the parties don't want it i'm sure nabu jinapo will say i mean if they come to power they want i mean majority so that they can do but but citizens don't want that it's not good for oversight i can tell you that it's not good for oversight really yes but have they with this parliament done enough in terms of oversight to want to have this kind of parliament again. Yes, not enough, not enough, not enough, but some oversight has taken place. It's improved. It's improved. Uh, Alfred, can you imagine if it was NDC that was in power and it had all the numbers? We wouldn't have any discussion about E-Levy. We wouldn't have any discussion about many other things that happen in this eighth parliament. So I'm speaking from the position of a citizen. I'm speaking from the position of somebody 
who has worked with both sides, and we are saying we want a very strong parliament so that that wobbly leg, I mean, parliament can stand on as equal strong leg as the two um, arms of government. Otherwise, you know, day in, day out, actions and inactions are leading to a situation where our parliament will be weakened, and we don't want that. Mm. And I think that... Um, and, and that is with the continuous references yes. and also bringing in the courts. Like I said at the beginning of my comment, the reason why we have 275 members sitting in that house mm -hmm. is for them to go and, I mean, politically negotiate. You know, where they cannot reach an agreement, they go out and try to find mechanisms to agree or mechanisms to, to disagree, but everybody around the table agreeing that we have agreed to disagree. And then the business of our country can continue. Mm. But if we keep running to the court, um, tomorrow you might try to do something, prevent that, and somebody will say, just like what we are seeing now, the president that was said, we should, we should be careful the types of precedents that we are setting. I think that that would do well mm -hmm. for our democracy. You know, because one moment, mm -hmm. we sat at the majority side, mm -hmm. if you remember. Yes. Because we consider ourselves as a majority. So will you go to the Supreme Court and tell the Supreme Court to direct us not to sit on the majority side? Then all of us will go to jail. Mm -hmm. Oh, how? I'm telling you, how? on the majority okay. side. So that's, where, where, the, that's where the political yeah, negotiation yeah. comes in, Alfred. Alfred, can I? Um, the, the, and, and as to what it would take for that political negotiation to take place, Dr. Shudra, and quick one before you go, because he's leaving us. The, the yeah. leader what, must what, what, start what, what, what will that take, or what will it take, or what must give for that political negotiation to take place, as you are recommending? Look, Alfred, in politics, I mean, all students of politics will tell you I mean, when you are in politics, especially when you are in a divided parliament like ours, you will never get everything 100%. It takes some giving and some taking. So rather than, I mean, when I hear Honorable Jinapo, I mean, it confirms, I mean, what I am thinking, that both sides are digging in and are digging in, I mean, very, very deep. Mm -hmm. um, we have to try and find a way of trying to bring them to the middle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, and I know that in a very polarized environment, for instance, today, if the president calls the leaders of um, the NDC in the parliament and says, come and let's negotiate, I mean, the repercussions, particularly from their foot soldiers, from the party and so on, will be huge. Um, if there's going to be negotiation, it has to be a very wide kind of stakeholder negotiation so that at least... Um, on Abu Jinapo and his group don't go to meet the president and then it sends a different signal altogether. We have to find a way to make it the business of our country, to make it the interest of our country is at heart. How do we get both sides to sit down and say, okay, we have these critical things that we need to do before the end of this parliament. Um, how do we get it done? And then that way, hopefully, if cool heads prevail, we can get out of this. But Alfred, let me make one last point. Okay. And, uh, and this is to both um, honorable members who are here. When people keep saying we have very important business to do before this uh, parliament ends, this parliament had four years. Mm -hmm. Could you read that to this parliament had four years. And, you know, it speaks to the practice that we have seen over the years, both NDC and MPP. During the last kind of days of um, yeah, the, uh, meetings, no, 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 no. yes, the before parliament goes on recess, yes. sometimes they sit up to midnight, and, and this has been the practice. So you, 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 instead of front loading most of this business so that it, they can be done, mm -hmm. we wait at the last minute when Honorable Jinapo is tired around midnight. <laughs> I mean, what thinking can he think in terms of scrutinizing anything? And then they approve all sorts of things. Exactly. And, and, then, it, longer, right? and so. then it gets our country into trouble because judgment, debts, and so on, because proper scrutiny is not done. So I think the parties have to learn some lessons from this. You know, if there's business, let's give our members of parliament enough time. Let's bring it forward. And this current crisis is teaching us a very important lesson. If you put these things, hold them to the last minute, 
and you face this kind of situation, then our country can come to a stop. And I think that um, that will be the last point on which I will land, Alfred. Well, and, and talk about the, and Dr. Zato, I'll come to you, but talk about the uh, pending bills before Parliament. We'll put that on the screen right now. The pending bills before Parliament. In fact, two of President Kufado's, um, in fact, the business, pending government business, and the bills as well. Um, two of President Kufado's Supreme Court nominees have still not been um, approved by Parliament. Also, tax waivers in excess of $350 million for 1D1F companies have also not been approved. And then also... We won't approve it. Wait, 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 wait. I am on... And don't use 1D1F because it's not really 1D1F. I'm just telling you. That this branding that we do it to just deceive the people of Ghana, we should stop. It's not 1D1F. It's one district, one I'm telling you, I know everything on the list. Some of them are in that. It's not 1D1F. The list of companies... Please, please, please. Let's stop this. You put in 1D1F. Yes, stop this kind of thing. It's not 1D1F. My brother, people are suffering now. People are suffering. So we can't continue to do this. I'll tell you something. The reason why this matter is a big matter. Do you remember the bus branding? Do you mm -hmm. know why bus branding was big? If you go and steal in a, you do some big corruption in sea defense, nobody will catch you because they can't even understand what it looks like. But when you do it with bus branding, that even taxi drivers do their branding, everybody can evaluate what is happening. That is why this matter is black and white. Don't fool the people of Ghana. Well, aside from this 1D1, well, you say the companies, you know them. You're a businessman. You know them. Some uh, are there, but don't brand the whole thing as if it's all 1D1F. That, that's my problem. Okay, there are some 1D1F business, uh, that's with about $350 million, and we haven't seen a transformation in this economy. Well, there are some pending bills, pending bills as well, um, oh. that have still not been concluded by Parliament. One, the merger of electricity company of Ghana and the Northern Electricity Development Company, NETCO, Bill 2024, the Business Regulatory Reform Commission Bill 2024, also the Office of the Administrator of Student Lands, and then the Nuclear Power Ghana Authority Bill. In fact, the EPA also have an interest in there. The Major of VRA and Bui Power Authority Bill which has been fiercely resisted by the senior staff of VRA over the period, and the Competition Bill 2024 as well, all of that, um, all these bills pending before Parliament. Dr. Jato, you, you wanted to make a quick intervention, uh, talking about the, the, the need for negotiated settlement to resolve the standoff in Parliament. Yeah. Uh, can that be achieved? Thank you very much. Yes, um, it's true that uh, sometimes it's easier to take a political problem and quickly make it into a legal one. Because sometimes what happens is that the legal one becomes so final that it ends the negotiations. Mm -hmm. But I agree that yes, there are some issues and especially when it comes to this particular issue, we need a very serious political negotiation, political trade-off, so that we can easily what, address it. But that is not going to happen. And you ask the question, when do you think that can happen? I think possibly that can happen on the 8th of December on the 9th of December, on the 10th of December. Because right now, both political parties are also playing to the gallery. Both political parties are also playing to the electorate. We cannot and we should not marginalize or try to what? Forget or ignore the imperative of the coming elections. We should not. And that is what you will see because both political parties want to show that, one, they will not give in, they will not give up, and that they can continue to fight for the people. And this, that is why you see that on the one hand, both political parties are trying to portray this as what? Fighting for uh, 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 the so-called ordinary persons. And that is why you see that the leaders of the two political parties, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, His Excellency uh, Vice President Baumi, have both waded into this debate. And that's good. So for me, that is why it will not happen now. That is why that negotiation will not happen. That is why that solution will not happen now. Because none of them will want to be seen to be given up. The NDC is, is making that point that look, our reset whatever starts now. So how will that, this that end? Eh? So this is never going to end. That's what I'm, no, I'm telling you when it's likely going to end. That after the elections, when the results are declared, and that is that is my opinion, when none of the voters are now pondering 
to the electorate. When none of the political parties now think that we cannot use, let's say, a win or a loss in the house to our political or to our electoral advantage. When you remove that, then cooler heads can stay, then we can get you. So that is what I believe. But I, of course, it can, it's possible that... Uh, uh, well, that will be at the expense of all of these yeah, yeah, that, pending, that, that, pending business. No, I think that, that even after elections, you can still do things. I'm not saying they will do it, but I'm thinking that it's possible to do it after December. There's seven. none of these okay. as agents. So, so my, my point is that I'm sure it can still be done. You can still pass bills after December 7th. Mm. It, uh, so for me, that's not bad. Of course, I can, uh, they can prove me wrong. It's possible that... What do we know? It's possible that even some discussions and negotiations are the background. Mm -hmm. It's possible that there are people that are sitting down and talking and trying to have a political solution to this. Mm -hmm. That is possible. But from where I sit and considering the imperative of the campaign and of the elections, I don't think any one of them will want to be seen to what? Giving up and allowing it. But then there's something that happened. Imagine in the world where when Professor Michael Quay ruled, somebody had gone to the Supreme Court, challenged what he said, and then there was finality on this. Will we have been where we are today? Just will we have been where we are today? The, the fact I, I just that, imagine that if I when he made that, that rule, the fact that Supreme Court so has ruled, you on asking the matter, a question for an answer, answer. Yeah. Mm, yes. So that, 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 that doesn't, doesn't matter. Matter. The fact that Supreme Court has ruled on the matter doesn't mean that the matter cannot be, you know, uh, mm -hmm. argued again. Mm -hmm. So okay. that is why we say Ro the Supreme Court is The Supreme Court is <laughs> can review. So okay. taking it to Supreme Court doesn't bring finality in itself. Okay. So I'm I'm asking ask that question because I want to find out ourselves. There is relative. Is there way? Mm -hmm. I said the Supreme Court gives relative finality. Yes. So is it possible for us to get a finality on this? Because from what they say, we cannot get a political finality on this. The oh. politics, the, 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 we cannot get Parliament to finalize this thing. And we can also get the Supreme Court. If you're saying that we cannot also get the Supreme Court to finalize then the question becomes, again, it then becomes uh, imperative for us to try to look for a middle ground. It then becomes imperative for us to look for a political solution. Because these things are going to happen. One, the executive, and it is the first time an executive president is learning to work with and evenly uh, uh, split parliament. And whatever that is happening now will set precedence for what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Because the moment we've now had this split parliament, it means that we will and we're likely going to have more down the line. It's my prayer. Mm -hmm. So if that happens, remember, the current president is forced, uh, he has to learn how to live with this current parliament on the job. In this, and at least under this republic. So it means, again, whatever lessons we are learning, whatever we are doing, we can, and coming to the point of saying, we can't then try to say, if we want to put the country forward, we can then basically, these decisions will have consequences going forward. And that if we continue to have a split parliament, we will now have to find political solutions. The question is, where are we going to get these solutions from? How are we going to what? navigate this what is going forward? in order for us to be able to, what, to make these breakthroughs. Because it looks to me like this, things, uh, this is not just a one-time aberration that we just have this divided parliament and it's just going to go. So it's down the line we're going to have more. We need to begin to, as a country, find solutions. We need to begin to find mechanisms that can solve it. You asked uh, the gentleman who left one question whether this parliament uh, has a, a just what. I said, yes. This parliament has justified it. For the first time, as I said, executives had to find new creative solutions and ways of dealing with the divided house. Mm -hmm. We've also said supervision of the house or the oversight provision of the house has also was improved and increased. And we've also said, look, the private member bills that you've seen the house pass, they've come as very important. For us, there are other bills that we can talk about later on. And the other important things that we may talk about later on, including the fight for Galam say. And that's what I'm saying, that one of the areas where this house could have done, should have done more, and didn't do more. So, yes, as a house, as, as a divided house, it has made some achievement that it can be proud of. And as a house, and I also pray that whatever the house is doing now, they, they look, they realize that going forward, going on the line, these things can be, they can be kind, uh, 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 minds, potential minds waiting to explode, or they can become uh, cases that people can now look at, I look at yesterday, this didn't happen, this is how we solve it, and that going forward, this is how we solve it. I pray that it becomes, it sets good precedence that we can always use that as a template to solve these difficult political positions going forward. But this kind of divided parliament, I think that it's probably come to stay. Uh, so, uh, so that negotiated settlement or the, the political solution to this, well, for Dr. Ziato, that, that may be difficult because of the current entrenched positions taking on this matter. But what must give? 
Will that happen? Yeah, but that is where you get to know true leadership. Leadership comes out of very difficult situations. We have stated that some of the issues whether with negotiation or without, we will not support it. For instance, these tax waivers. The 350 Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I find it very fraudulent. I mean, so for 1D, 1F, yes, and at each one committee one meeting. Please, don't say that thing. <laughs> Put the list out and let's discuss it. At, at each committee meeting. Put it out meeting. and let's discuss it. At, at, <laughs> at each committee meeting, like Senor is saying, any time we pick even one of them and we raise the issues, the chairman himself is compelled to stand it down. You're a so, member of the finance committee. Yes, yeah, so I'm sure that it didn't go through. And if you do a critical analysis of all the requests, about 90% of them will not pass. So I don't see the agency of it. No, no. But my point is that if the president wants a solution, he knows what to do. And what? that is leadership. What I'm the not president the president. Do? I did not go to get to stand on the ticket that I should be voted as president. And it's not easy to be the president of Ghana. It comes with a certain level of tact, a certain level of maturity, and I expect that the president would show that. But this attempt to push it down our throat, this attempt to rough shoulders with us, this attempt to use the judiciary to gag us and to push us aside, I can assure you, it will not happen. Not under our watch. It won't happen in parliament. And we know what we are doing in Parliament. We have our strategies. We won't put it here. But if anybody thinks that they can use some rough tactics to eliminate us, I can assure you, we remain resolute. We remain very firm and committed. And we'll do what is right and proper to serve this country. I would advise the Supreme Court particularly to tread cautiously. I thought that the Supreme Court at least would have listened to the side of the Speaker or Parliament before even making that pronouncement. Be that as it may, this is where we find ourselves. In fact, we have just, just about 40 days to the elections. Mm -hmm. Let's hold everything and go for the election. 40 days. Go from here, I'm going to the constituency. We're going to campaign. I'm very determined to retain my seat and pro probably add some seats to the NDC. So. Are you this, going to add seats to your NDC? Are you going to contest on two different No, I'm supporting, I'm supporting <laughs> some other seats. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have some okay. three more seats to take from the Savannah region to add to the four so that we get seven. So we, we have a, a duty to not just win my seat, but help the NDC to win some other seats. And that is exactly what we're doing. So I think we should hold everything. Like it's been said, after Parliament, we have about one month. Because we'll come for the whole of... December. Mm -hmm. the, that, at that time, the chiefs would have fallen and would have known where we are. So and we can, pick, can, the key. We can pick the key. Oh, we do that. Even okay. on the eve of parliament. Yeah, yeah. I recall the, the a day January before 6th. parliament mm -hmm. was uh, dissolved. Mm -hmm. We got some bills yes. attended to. So it's not a problem at all. There's no agency about the 1D1F. One There's no agency about those bills they are talking about. In any case, they don't even have the numbers. So the majority side before, the, before can no longer compel our majority side now to do what they want. Well, that's too but there's, there's it's too not going to happen. President Kufado's nominees for the Supreme Court. They've been pending for a very long time. Even when they were majority, they couldn't pass them. How are they going to pass them when they are now minority? So I think we should hold it. Let's go, come, and then uh, the chips would have fallen, would have known where we are. And normally, what you'll be doing at this time is to do things to help the next government. That's how democracy works. At your twilight, or when you are about handing over, whatever policy decision you are taking, you must have the next government in mind. And so whatever would have been doing post-December would be to be preparing the ground for the next government. Don't forget that we also have to pass the initial phase of the budget, not mm -hmm. the full budget, the three-month yeah, the, the first quarter. holding period. Uh -huh. So mm -hmm. those are the issues that we'll be dealing with. But now, let's remain calm. But surprisingly, you know, some voices have been very, very quiet in this matter. Which, which voices Either were you hoping two, to you would hear? have heard the Ghana Bar. The Ghana Bar? Yes. Yeah, the the one, Peace right Council yes. and all the Council of State. Yes. The Peace Council Calling. says they have, met, they have met the leadership of both sides. In respect of what? In respect of this matter. Oh, and, and what was their point? I'm just saying that 
they've been their loud silence is, is 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 very very deafening. Let me put it that way. <laughs> but finally, my my point is simple. Look, let it be where we are. There's no need for the Afenyo marking led side to attempt to recall us. Let's go and campaign. Let's finish the election. When we come back, if there's any other issue, we'll take it up from there. Okay. And, and if there's going to be any negotiated, as it were, understanding or position to deal with this matter, you would expect that the president w would step in or should be thinking about stepping in to bring some level of what negotiation to this matter? Absolutely. He's the first gentleman of the land. I see. And how he lands the boat rests with him, not just with parliament, but even with the elections. So he should and navigate with Dalamsi. and everything and everything. He should navigate it and dock the ship of state and anchor it in a very, very tactical manner. Especially at this critical moment, he should be very cautious with his utterance, with his posture, with how he goes about things, because we would not allow anybody to run into arrest. It's not going to happen. As for that one, let me assure whoever is watching this program that the NDC would not allow anybody to take us for a ride, be it in parliament, during the election, coalition of results, announcing the results. We would ensure that the right thing is done, and we are determined to ensure that the right thing is done. And nothing, absolutely nothing, and I mean what I'm talking about, nothing would push us aside. So it rests with him. He is a president who is exiting. He is not contesting. And in any advanced democracy, when a president is exiting, mm -hmm. he exits with a very, very good face. He remains more impartial, even though he has a political party. And most of his policy decisions ought to be seen to help the next administration to address the key challenges that we are faced with. And on your topic, we'll be dealing with the economy. Mm -hmm. And I'll point to you the real issues that should confront us as a nation, and the next government, the challenges the next government will be faced with as far as the economy is concerned. For me, those are the areas we should be looking at so that we can make a headway as a country. I see. And uh, in, in concluding on this matter, Senor, yeah. the point earlier that you made and the reason why you think that this, this particular 97-1 GNH is clear and in plain language, the NPP has also reserved and executed their right of going to the Supreme Court to seek interpretation so that, in their view, they, they would seek to correct the wrong now of Professor Michael Quay. The, What's problem, wrong with that? the first thing, Professor Michael Quay is not in this question at all. That's the first thing. They, they, they now, the position is that they're is referring wrong. to Michael Kwe for is the political expediency of the people in doing politics. Forget about him. I beg you, in the name of God, all of us, take the constitution. When you go online, look for Ghana constitution. You will find it. Yeah, that's the camera. Everybody, Ghanaian, you are all responsible to make sure you understand your own constitution. It is here. Uh huh. Let me go there. Please, every citizen take the constitution. It is not for lawyers alone. It was written by hairdressers. It was written by carpenters. It was written by businessmen. Mokola people, just like you and me. Obi Akanubi, go and read it. Read Article 97. And I, I quote. I don't know if that's how they say it in court. Yes. I don't even worry. I can read. And I quote. Mm, quote. A member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. And the conditions are here. I jump to D. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party or seek to remain in parliament as an independent member, have the people left their party to another party? If yes, you don't even this constitution doesn't say anybody will have to vacate you. You yourself should just honorable advise yourself and leave. Number two. H. So 97 1 H. If he was elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party, not even if they decide to contest to, if you join a political party. So question 
the second deputy minister, uh, well, speaker, I me, mean, I've said the, I like that man. He supported us when we're fighting the DP. He's a good man. If I'm in this country, me, I'll vote for him. You understand? But this one there is lying. Okay. So the question, was he was he not an independent before he came to this parliament? They didn't contest okay. as an independent. You contested. Today, have you joined another party? In fact, he should have vacated the time he went for primaries. Because you cannot be um, an independent, you cannot not be a member of parliament, a, a, a member of a party and contest contest the, the, the primaries of that party. A, am I right? You can't say you are, you are not a member of MPP, but you can contest MPP primaries. So from the day he decided to take a new party card at, M, M, well, at the MPP, he should have vacated. This is not even asking for any speaker. He says you shall vacate because it's an honorable house. So do the honorable thing. I don't have a problem with the politics, but let's just be honest about things where ghana is right now we can't be lying and be fighting over petty things there are serious issues we have to deal with let's start by being honest with ourselves what at all is it that's going to be lost between now and and Jan january january 7th i i can't figure it out is it wow. egos the egos of everybody in parliament is not bigger than the supreme interest of the state the sustainability of our democracy which for me is my biggest problem when we are doing this this uh, Tom and Jerry thing, it should be over other things, but not for what even anybody, anybody. My grandma, if I go and read it to her, she will just tell you that. Okay, well, uh, Dr. Justice Trims, I, uh, this is what Dr. Tony Edo said, and I'm going to read it. Do and good morning to Dr. Tony Edo. He says, the Speaker of Parliament applied a provision that automatically kicks in. The Speaker of Parliament did not make a ruling or an order. Article 97, Clause 1, and the subclauses operate automatically. They are akin to what in criminal law we may say is strict liability. For instance, the law says you must have a driving license before you move a vehicle. If you don't have a driving license, you are guilty. With, 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 with strict liability <laughs> offenses, the courts and the prosecution don't have to prove mens rea. Now, what case did the Honorable Afenio Marking take to the Supreme Court? And, and what is the subject of interpretation in this context, as Dr. Tonyedu is talking about? Yes, so the Constitution spells out what should happen if certain things happen. Like Senior read, it says that you shall vacate the seat when certain things happen. What are those things? When you come to the House on a ticket of a political party and you decide to leave that political party, or when you come as an independent candidate and you decide to join a political party. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, when these things happen, the consequences are determined by the constitution. It's not for anyone to now decide what should happen. So what happened in parliament was simply that someone brought the facts to the attention of the speaker, that these people by record have changed their political parties. And that is true. By filing nomination on another party's ticket, you have automatically abandoned your party. Mm -hmm. and. It is an irreversible you know, decision. And if you read the case of J.H. Mensah and uh, well, MPP and NDC, mm -hmm. there was a situation where some NDC members went to file nomination. They were civil servants. And you know, the Constitution prevents civil servants from you know, contesting it as MPs. Mm -hmm. So they filed nomination to be... Uh, uh, initially, they were, they were elected in primaries. And then... They were about to file nominations. The person brought the case to court and said that they had taken a decision. And the court said, the final point of taking a decision on whether you have contested or you have left your party is when you file the nomination. It is that decision which led to Ezanato and also led to Jachi uh, mm -hmm. That once you file the nomination, you have reached that line where you cannot what, reverse the situation. So if there's evidence that you have filed nomination on the ticket of other political vehicles, right. the, then the consequence is that you vacate. So as far as some of us are concerned, mm -hmm. there is it's not even a question of interpretation. Be that as it means, even if you want a question of interpretation, my question is, until the interpretation is done by the Supreme Court, the consequence should not be that things should not happen. When the Supreme Court finally looks at the merits of the case and takes a decision that it is wrong to get the people out, then we can say that's judicial review. So I believe that... So that's why you have the problem with the stay of the execution of yeah, the Yeah, I, I have a okay, problem with the right. stay. And, and let me just add this. You see, Quickly. we are all learning. 
the Supreme Court itself is learning because they have not been through this situation before. Right. And I believe that Parliament is learning, the President is learning, even we the citizens, we are all learning. Mm -hmm. And I think we should take the position of learners in, 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 in resolving these issues than the, uh, the position of being uh, persons who just churn out decisions and churn out laws or churn out you know, opinions. Mm -hmm. We should take a step back that, okay, why should we even encourage someone who is a member of a political party in, in Parliament to at the same time while in parliament, you know, be contesting on a ticket of another party. What benefit does it bring to a democracy when you are in parliament on ticket? You fraudulently you know, represent yourself you know, to so us as the electors. No and later come and change it. There's okay, no benefit let, to, to what we are even trying to promote. But there's a benefit in telling people that you cannot be on the ticket of party A and be contesting in an election for another party. There's benefit in that. So if you weigh these options, I think that we should we should just we should go back to what we are saying. This issue is about negotiation. And leadership is a function of negotiation. If you're a leader, you should have the capacity to negotiate and understand that legacy is at stake here. Mm -hmm. I mean, President Akufari is in his last days. As a president, the, what you want is that I will hand over peacefully to whoever is succeeding me, and I will live a very a strong a, a country. That is why in America, it's a state of the nation. When they right. finish the sentence, they said, the state of the nation a strong. Right. We should be able to leave the state of a nation stronger than you met it. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Justice Shremsai is a senior lecturer at University of Ghana uh, School of Law. And also I have uh, uh, John Jinapo, Dr. Zato, also senior lecturer at University of Ghana Political Science Department. And Senor, stay with us.